Good morning, friends. I'm happy to be able to bring you an Easter message this morning. And amidst all the things that are happening around the world and, and of course, in our own country, the sadness, uh, the death and destruction brought by this uh, coronavirus, I'm happy to be bringing a positive message this morning because it's a message about Easter. It's a message about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and the hope that we have in our own resurrection as we follow the Lord because He is the first fruits, the Bible says, of our own resurrection. Shall we bow in a word of prayer? Lord, we thank You for this day. Thank You for Your Word, Lord. Thank You for the privilege to be able to speak and to hear your word, Lord, this morning. We pray that by your spirit, it will become alive in our hearts and our lives. We commit this time to you and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Meyer Perlman is quoted as saying, the resurrection of Christ is the miracle of Christianity. It is the miracle with which the entire Christian faith stands or falls. Paul the Apostle seemed to say the same thing when he wrote, if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain. Your faith also is in vain. It's no wonder then that the enemies of Christ were so concerned that Jesus' body would remain cold and lifeless in the tomb. If Christ had not risen from the dead, we would have nothing upon which to base our faith. The resurrection of Christ. The enemies of Christ tried to prevent Jesus from coming out of the tomb. They received permission from the governing authorities to secure the tomb where Jesus was laid. They placed guards at the tomb to keep Jesus' disciples and others away. And they set a seal on the stone to prevent unauthorized entry into the tomb. The unauthorized breaking of this seal would mean certain punishment. The Bible prophecies had foretold that Jesus would rise from the dead. His resurrection on the third day was according to the Old Testament Jewish and Hebrew scriptures. Psalm 16 and verse 10 of the Hebrew Old Testament says, For thou wilt not abandon my soul to Sheol, neither wilt thou allow thy Holy One to see the pit or to undergo decay. Hosea and the prophets of the Old Testament of the Bible says, He will revive after two days. He will raise us up on the third day that we may live before him. God had said through Old Testament prophecies that his son would rise from the dead on the third day. Jesus had said that he would rise from the dead on the third day. On one occasion he said of himself, just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the sea monster, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. And then on another occasion he said, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. He was speaking, of course, of the temple of his body. Even the enemies of Christ knew of his claim to rise from the dead, and they quoted Jesus as saying, After three days I am to rise again. The words of the songwriter express the power and confidence of Jesus to fulfill his promise to rise from the dead. And the songwriter wrote, I'll rise again. Ain't no power on earth can tie me down. Yes, I'll rise again. Death can't keep me in the ground. It's been said by someone, and perhaps you've heard this phrase, your arms are too short to box with God. Man is no match for God. You and I are no match for God. The enemies of Jesus were no match for God. All of the best of human efforts could not keep Jesus in the tomb that day. And so the stone 
was rolled away. And why was it rolled away? It was rolled away only so that humanity could enter and see that the body of Christ was gone. He had risen from the dead. The enemies of Christ tried to cover up what happened at the tomb. The guards came to them and reported what had happened at the tomb site. The enemies of Christ bribed the guards with a large sum of money. They, con they concocted a lie and bribed the soldiers to tell him, tell this lie. The soldiers took the money and told the lie. But God would see to it that the truth of Jesus' resurrection would be told. Despite the best efforts of men, the news is out. This is what really happened. A severe earthquake occurred, the Bible tells us. An angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat on it. And his appearance was like lightning and his garment as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. That's what really happened. And almost 2,000 years later, what was supposed to be covered up is known. And indeed a miracle took place. The stone was rolled back and no human being touched it. The body of Christ is gone and no human being moved it. The tomb is empty and no human being entered it. Skeptics have tried to explain it away, but all of the best attempts to explain away Jesus' resurrection have fallen short. And so 2,000 years later, Christians all over the world celebrate one of the greatest events of human history, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. But what does this all mean? How does Christ's resurrection affect my life? Why is this so important down where the rubber meets the road? Is there anything in this truth for me? Yes, there is. Jesus rose from the dead for you and for me. What happened on that resurrection morning happened for you and for me. When God brought Jesus out of that tomb, you and I were on the mind of God. He did it for you, and He did it for me. Among the many good things that Christ's resurrection means for us, three is what I'll mention this morning briefly. First, the resurrection of Jesus means that Jesus is all that He claimed to be, Son of God, Savior, and Lord. Jesus' enemies made him out to be a deceiver, but he told the truth, and his resurrection proved it. Someone has said, the answer of the world to Jesus' claims was a cross, and God's answer to Jesus' claims was the resurrection. His message was true, Jesus' message. His predictions were true. His claims about himself were true. On one occasion, some of Jesus' critics requested some sort of sign from him that would authenticate his claims. And Jesus told them, no sign shall be given, but the sign of Jonah the prophet. For just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the sea monster, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Jesus' authentication would come in his resurrection from the dead. No one but Christ ever foretold his resurrection from the dead after three days and delivered on that promise. The Son of God did. Jesus was who he said he was. Secondly, Jesus' resurrection means that forgiveness for sin and wrongdoing is possible. The New Testament of the Bible says, and I quote, And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is worthless, Paul wrote. You are still in your sins. But Christ has been raised, and so forgiveness for sin 
and wrongdoing is possible. Why is God's forgiveness for sin so important for you and for me? Well, you see, all that separates us from a holy God is our wrongdoing, those things that displease the Lord. And in order for us to be brought back into right relationship with God, we need to have His forgiveness. And it works the same with those that you know. If you're wrong a friend, and you want that relationship restored, you ask his or her forgiveness. And so it is with God, and he was always ready to forgive. Jesus' resurrection makes forgiveness with God, a relationship with him is possible. Thirdly, Christ's resurrection means that we have hope of our own resurrection. Thanks be to God, that there is life beyond this earthly life because of Jesus' resurrection. In the resurrection chapter of the Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 of the New Testament of the Bible, it says this, But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who are asleep. In other words, Jesus was the first to be raised to live forever, and those who die believing in him have that hope as well. Christ became the first, and after him, many will follow. Thanks be to God, this is not all there is. Thanks be to God, there is life beyond this earthly life. Thanks be to God, there is a hope beyond the short 60 or 70 years that we may have. And Jesus made it all possible through his resurrection. Thank you, Lord. In order to receive all that God has provided for us through Christ's resurrection, this is what we need to do. First, we need to admit our need. For some people, it's hard for them to admit their need of God, but friends, we need the Lord and we need him in a great way today. We need to admit that we are in need of God and that we are in need of his forgiveness. Then we need to be willing to turn from those things that displease the Lord that we might live in a wonderful relationship with him. We're not gonna have a wonderful relationship with God while we endeavor to do those things that displease him. We need to believe that Christ died for us on the cross and rose from the grave for our benefit. Paul the Apostle told one man, he said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, he told this man in your household. Through prayer, we invite the Lord into our lives to be our Savior, our guide, and our friend. Do it today and experience some of God's resurrection power. Do it today and receive all that God has provided through Christ's resurrection. And remember on this Easter Sunday, remember that Jesus rose for you and he rose for me. Shall we have a word of prayer together? Lord, we come to you today in Jesus' name. And we thank you for the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, that you raised him from the dead. We give you thanks and praise that because Christ raised from the dead, we have a hope as well that we shall rise from the grave forever to be with you. Lord, I pray for those on this Easter Sunday that may not know you, they've not placed their faith and trust and confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you, Father, today that you want to be their Savior as well, that Jesus wants to be their Savior as well. And I pray, Lord, for them. I pray that, Lord, they will reach out in faith and accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. Help them, Lord. Grant them the faith that they need. Help them as they endeavor to turn from the things that 
displease you. And Lord, I know that as they ask for your forgiveness, you will be faithful and just to forgive them of sin and to cleanse them from all unrighteousness. Lord, I pray for those who receive this Easter message, this gospel message this Easter, that you would be with them and grant them that new life that they need in you. And Lord, for those looking for hope, hope in this world in which there is so much trouble, we thank you for the hope that Jesus came to bring us, not only in the life to come, but in this life. And that he came to give us abundant life, a life worth living, a life filled with your joy and your peace and your presence. And I pray that, Lord, on this Easter Sunday, Lord, you would touch every heart and every life, touch everyone who, who is watching this broadcast, watching over their computers. I pray for them, Lord, and pray that, Lord, you would touch them. Lord, that you would restore their faith if their faith is wavering. Lord, that you would grant them encouragement in, in their hearts by your precious Holy Spirit, for we know that all things are possible with you. We thank you and we praise you for these blessings today. And once again, for raising Jesus from the dead. We pray in his wonderful name. Amen. Amen. God bless you and give you a wonderful day in the Lord today. Amen. I believe in the sun I believe in the risen one I believe I overcome By the power of His blood Amen Amen Call my name.